Good evening. It's November 23rd. Um, doing a bench test. My bench is eh, kind of messy right now, and I needed to simulate a 48 volt battery bank to test the controller. Um, first, we're going to go through and test the three phases of the turbine stator. And I'm just going to spin it with my hand a little bit. And she's making volts just with my hand. So see what it does when we attach the drill it is a 7 amp drill 600 rpm um, we'll probably achieve close to that unloaded uh, we're just doing voltage test we're just testing the open circuit voltage um, <clears throat> We'll go through each phase. There should be two phases that'll be real close in voltage, and then there's always one that's just a, a little bit lower. So let's see what we got. About 57. that one to this one make sure they don't cross look up our drill so that most likely is our phase that's a little bit lower and then we'll take this one and bring it over here and this one should be right about 57 again okay Perfect. There's nothing wrong with that. Bearing spins nice and smooth. And just with my hand, I can make, I don't know, well, there's almost 16 volts there. So, stator itself, uh, the turbine itself, I think, is functioning perfectly fine. Um, before I, I'm doing all this one handed, so I'm, I'm going to have to make some leads and run them to the controller. Um, I'm going to cut out for that part. But before I do all that, on the last video I told you I would show you that bearing and the internals of this turbine here. Our stator is sitting in here, you know, and it goes from about there to there. And then our slip ring is right behind that with some neat brushes <clears throat> so this is the stator off of the 24 volt 500 watt turbine and uh, you know there's there's a good deal of weight there just for comparison's sake that is the stator out of a 10 SI 12 volt automotive alternator. Exact same concept of operation here. They're three phase alternators. Here's the back of that alternator and what that does. It sits on there and your three phases attach to the rectifier. This is what transfers the 
AC into DC. Um, it's a bunch of diodes, blocking diodes. One half of that ends up being uh, ground negative power. This back side is negative. This front side is positive. That's why it's all shielded. And then this post goes through there. That's your charging wire. Our turbines have the exact same concept of operation. But, um, so this is a 12 volt stator. See so how the wire is considerably thicker. Um, that's because 12 volts, even though it's half the volts, it's twice the amps. So it needs thicker wire. Um, this stator is a good third, I'd say 30 to 50% heavier than this. It's got more mass and copper. Um, this actually are really well made. The coils and everything are, are wound real nice and they're coated real nice. Um, and, you know, this has seen some weather. Um, and it's not in that bad of shape. So, and these are the rotors, uh, neodymium magnets. It's dirty right now. And there's some metal shavings stuck to it. Oh, oh damn. That's wrong there. Oh, there it is again. Oh. But look at that bearing. Thick, thick bearing. The bearing that came out of this alternator is this little guy right there. Look at my finger in comparison. That or that. So that's what uh, you know uh, holds down when this turbine is twirling. And the wind is changing um, the centrifugal force of these blades and the weight of these blades shifting back and forth and back and forth. Uh, it's called pitching and yawing. Um, puts a good deal of stress on the bearings. Um, so instead of having a small bearing in the front and a small bearing in the back, like your alternator has, see, look at that dinky little thing in the back. Um, it's just got one super heavy duty double roller bearing um, on the shaft. And uh, so there's that. Yeah, the, the magnets are impressively strong. Like that I'm not going to get off one handed. Um, so that's how those work. And these are our slip rings. That's what goes inside of the uh, inside of the shaft going down. And these are our wires coming out. And I don't know where. I've got an extra set of brushes, but I don't know where they are. Anyhow, they're you know they're uh, brass contacts that ride on these and they're stationary um, with and they're ooh, with spring tension behind them so the turbine can spin and it keeps contact of all three phases this stays stationary um, so that's what allows this to spin and notice the wires do not. I've got this just temporarily mounted on a stand here so I can do this testing. I put some spacers in between there so I didn't pinch my wires. But yeah, it can tilt a little bit. But anyhow, that's how the slip ring operates. So I'm going to swap this over. And tie in our controller. I do have it tied to the battery bank, so it's on. Screen is working. So let's uh, turn.
try to get some output out of this turbine and see what kind of display functions we have with our controller. Be back in a minute. Okay. So, got our three phases in the turbine hooked up to the controller. Um, I just used alligator clips and pinched them in there. This is uh, going to be going up north soon and being installed in its new home, so I didn't want to be um, crimping wires and making wires just for the purpose of this test, so test leads it are, it is, uh, it'll work just fine for the test. So, um, again, this is a 600 RPM, 7 amp motor, um, let's see what we can do, I've got her set to watt output, um, we should not, uh, exceed probably more than three or four hundred rpms on the drill because it'll be loaded now so anyhow let's see what we do well then that's pretty sweet 217 watts. Um, there's a lot of options to go through here. I'm impressed with all the amount of different things I can uh, monitor here. Sorry about the view. Okay, wind volts. I can get the volts coming out of the turbine. Amps. All right, that's what I wanted to see. So, there's seven amps going in. Let's see what's coming out. point four that is honestly not bad <laughs> considering the mechanical loss and the gearbox and the drill um, and oh, <laughs> going from skinny wire to the, the loss inside mechanical loss with the bearings is all brand new bearings that have never been spun or broken in um, and brand new controller that I have not set anything on. I literally just powered it up uh, five and a half amps out of it with seven going in. That's that's actually pretty cool. Um, the theories of perpetual motion make it impossible to ever get what you're putting in back out or or more um but there's there's always loss that's and that's just the way these systems work but um no that's that's pretty sweet just a quick bench test with the drill you know i probably got it spinning 300 rpms you know that thing was kicking 217 watts that's that's sweet um that's definitely better than my 500 bench tested um you know mind you that was just using this chintzy thing that came with it you know and whatever it served its purpose uh it's dirty from a little overspray that's basically just a rectifier and then there's a, a voltage sense in there that applies a brake and the brake grounds out the three phases and uh, it slows that magnet down and holds it in place. Um, that's a really good way to fry a turbine. Don't use these. If you see real wind, don't use these. At my house, 
and I was fine. Um, I've got turbulent crap wind, so, you know, my, my wind control system is totally overkill. It'll never melt down, but, yeah, when I was bench testing, I was using this for a rectifier and uh, a shunt to measure my output, and, yeah, I think I got 92 or something watts out of it, but then again, I believe I was using a cordless drill and not the big power guy but you know I wanted to show some power here I'm excited about that there it is making power uh, 217 watts that's sweet just on a bench test with a, a shitty old mixer drill this is gonna haul when it's got these blades accelerating it on top of that hill, that whole hill is like an airfoil, accelerating air towards it. Uh, these are 810 millimeter blades, and I think, uh, I don't know, 81 centimeters. That's uh, about 35 inch blades. They're almost 40 inches, but if you'll notice, Watch for the rock back. Ooh. So, that means this guy is a little heavier. I've got him almost perfectly balanced. Let's follow this one. I think that's the heavy one. Bet you it's not going to rock back now. Yep. So, that's how you do that. You find your heavy blade, and you can put it at a 45 and just let it go. And you see, it's, it's close. It's so close that without working inertia, it can't get itself to rock back. Um, so, I'm gonna have to add a little bit more paint to this one. Um, and uh, compensate for it, but yeah, how about that John Deere green? Gorgeous, eh? Um, I'll add one more coat to the front side of that and the back side and let that dry and I'll give her another spin tomorrow and it should be just about perfect but you know don't rush this step that is a tedious 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 step but it's the difference between blowing that bearing out if you've got you know uh, a blade even one gram heavy that's going to cause vibration in the bearing and that's going to transfer through and down the pole and that's going to make your pole vibrate and that's all lost energy. There's some guys that say it doesn't matter. They're wrong. They're dead wrong. You want to see rated power out of your turbine? Balance your blades. Balance your blades and I'll tell you what, paint them with a, a gloss and make them smooth and slippery so the wind can just slide past that. Um, yeah. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'll say it over and over again. Balance your blades, man. It's just like, uh, you know, when you, when you buy tires and rims, you buy new tires and new rims for your car. Uh, do you just take them off the shelf and throw them on your car and then hop up on the highway? Hell no. Hell no. He'd hit 45 miles an hour and your car would be shaking all over the place. Balance your blades. Don't take a turbine out of the box, throw it together and put it up in the air and think it's just going to perform. You know, that's just common sense and logic. Uh, it's a large rotating mass that has the potential to hit 1,000 RPMs. Um, that can rip these apart if you've got a big enough 
weight offset. You see turbines fail. That's because they didn't balance the blades. They didn't set them up right. So either the tower isn't tall enough or the blades weren't balanced. Uh, if you've got a turbine that's not performing or a combination of both. But yeah. And generally, you want to start by adding weight to the hub. You start at the hub and you get it close. And you mark your heavy one and you add a tiny bit to the others until, until you can achieve that. You know, you spin it and when it just comes to rest, it doesn't do that. It just comes to rest and stops. It's perfectly balanced. And also, when you have your marked blade, you want that to stop in random positions, not just, you know, uh, you mark the heavy one. Um, if it's stopping in the downward position every single time, see, there it goes back again. See, that's the heavy one. Um, and it's still it's still off balanced you know you got to keep that mark and when you compensate add weight to the other blades it should be not rocking back and coming to rest in totally random positions and when you can achieve that you're damn close and that's damn close enough to go up in the air and make you some power um, if it's a little bit off, that's not going to damage. You know, that little bit, if you're not rocking back and it's stopping randomly, that's, that's as close as you can get without going to, uh, you know, airplane manufacturer and paying them $1,500 to harmonically balance your set. Um, but why would you do that with a, a $400 turbine? So... Anyhow, she works. Blades are almost ready. Controller. It's got the green light. Um, I am curious to learn a little bit more about its internal dump load function and the PC link, what I can do with that. I have not read the book yet <clears throat> but I will and we'll update when I know more it's about time to give this girl a paint job this is going to get camoed out and it's all going to blend into the landscape so until then thanks for watching take care